Hey guys, Kenny here. So today I will be showing you the top five Minecraft bedrock mods to add to your world. That's right bedrock mods to add to your creative or survival world and these mods won't be any op crazy difficult mods to play minecraft on these will be good mods that are actually fun to have in your survival or creative world and yes you can do this on every console and if you want a tutorial on how to get mods on bedrock on any console this video right here at the top right will cover everything for you it'll be right there and also in the description as well after done watching that you can come back here and i will show you the best mods you will want to add to your world i will also leave a link to all the mods that I use in this video in the description so stick around and let me know which one you used in the comments below so starting from the bottom at number five we have a mod that some may like but some may not not enough teleporters so what does this mod even allow you to do well it's pretty self-explanatory as you can see I have a bunch of different types of colors and variations of teleporters and all this mod does is add teleporters to your world. Overall, this mod is really on the simpler side, so that's why it's so far down on the list. But the only catch to this mod is it's pretty difficult to actually craft the teleporters in survival mode. I'll be showing how to make it as I explain more. Basically, you have to find this ore that randomly spawns around the map, and you have to combine it with more ores like diamonds and also expensive items like obsidian and ender pearls. It could be really useful when doing buildings, structure, maybe even on a map if you want to do an adventure map and you want teleporters or if you just like mobility and you think that elytras are a little bit outdated well this mod is for you there's a bunch of different colors you can choose from and also you can place many different teleporters in one location there's very little lag because each teleporter is actually a block not an entity so you don't have to worry about that and overall i just think this is a very useful mod so that's why i put it in the top five but these will start to get progressively better as we move on Next up, number four, we have a really useful one. This is going to be the furniture mod. Now this mod I recommend everybody to have in their survival world. Although a great game, Minecraft never really allowed us to make functional, good looking chairs or couches or any pieces of furniture. This mod solves that problem in a way that no other mod does. The thing that is so unique about this furniture mod is that they actually, again, use no entities to create the furniture. Well, Kenny, why are no entities so important to a mod? So usually when you download a furniture mod or, or any mod that includes some sort of interactable item, there would be a spawn egg to use the item. Now for this, usually there will be a spawn egg to place down the furniture. This mod does not do that. So every chair actually counts as a block, meaning you won't get a bunch of lag when placing a lot of them. So this is not only good for making cities or big structures, but also it works very smoothly on console even though a lot of other mods don't. And on top of that, all of the furniture can be crafted in survival really easily. So I think this is a great addition that every world should have. It's nothing crazy, but it also adds a bit of seasoning to your survival world. For those that like the game, pretty simple. Now, if you are one of those who like the game a bit on the crazier side, <laughs> me, then you will like the next one. For number three, we have a mod that I find myself actually using pretty often as well. This is the mob randomizer mod. So this mod is one of my favorites because I feel like sometimes my Minecraft doesn't really have that spark of life when walking around. You know, you see all the normal animals that you're used to seeing. Well, this mod can add up to 1,000 new mobs hostile and non hostile but the best part about this mod is you can actually add however many you want you can choose from three different options 100 mobs 300 mobs or 1000 mobs if you're feeling crazy now i recommend just to go with the 100 mobs if you are on console as you want to stop as much lag as possible since console struggles with mods a lot which is a good option because 100 mobs still adds a lot of variety to the game without making it completely different which is the key to having a fun modded world so not only is this a great mod but you can also change the mob limit up maybe a thousand is way too much maybe a hundred is way too little you can go in the middle you can go towards a hundred it's it's good i like mods that have a lot of variety to it in that you can easily fit into a realm or a world where you're gonna have a lot of players in which brings us to the last two and this is gonna get real good now so at number two i have one of the best mods you can add to your world whether it's creative or survival and that will be none other than the more structures mod this mod is great not only because it adds more exploring to the game but it also brings out the mystery in it as well as adds five more mobs to the fight this mod adds 120 plus dungeons and structures to explore which usually have 
pretty good loot in them. If you feel a little overwhelmed, there's also a simple version, which I will also link next to this one in the description, which has smaller scale structures, but will still keep you busy. The reason I like this mod so much is because once you've explored the simple structures of Minecraft, you know, the temples, the mansion, you know, all the things that you already know, it gets pretty boring because you find the same thing over and over again. Well, this mod not only adds more structures, but also lets you have more loot, which I love about that because it works really well with some other mods like loot bags, which I'll have here at honorable mentions. This mod is probably one of the most useful mods when it comes to pairing up with different ones. It's exactly as it sounds. So in random chests around the map, they spawn randomly in villages and you can also find them in dungeons. The loot bags mod is great. If you're just starting out on a world, you come across a loot bag. They come in different varieties, different rarities, scaling from normal to epic. And they can have some pretty good stuff in them, but they can also have some pretty bad stuff in them. So I suggest adding this to your world if you ever have any sort of ore mod or weapon mod because you may find yourself in luck if you find one of these in a dungeon. Okay, last but not least, for the number one, the best hands down mod to add to Bedrock is the Tinker's Construct mod. Literally my favorite mod. Tinker's Construct adds a lot of interesting mechanics to the game and is very well made. That's the strength of this mod. You can craft hundreds of different tools with the Tinker's table, different combinations of ores and materials that customize the perks of the weapon to your liking. So you can add bones to a weapon, it'll make it faster. You can add maybe slime to a weapon, it'll make it slower, but it'll give it more power. It adds this survival, realistic feeling to the game. There are also completely different HUDs, so it truly feels like an extension of the game. As you can see, the Tinker's Table is a completely different menu than a regular crafting table, so it literally feels like a real mod. The best part is it adds a function called a forge to the game. You can melt different ores and pour them into molds and castings to create your new weapons. So you craft these patterns and you can put them into the forge, which can then pour molten lava or molten iron, molten copper into the stencil, which will then create your new tool. So a cool part of this mod is the forge not only lets you melt down ores really fast, but it also can let you melt down different tools, different items that you find around the game that you want to turn into ore, and it'll all store it in the tank that you build. Then when you're ready, you can go and click on the faucet and it will pour out whatever metal you have into the casting. Pretty cool stuff, and I suggest everyone to try this. So this mod is very popular on Java, and I'm happy that someone actually decided to recreate it on Bedrock, so big props to them, and I hope you will enjoy it as well. Keep in mind, all of these mods are great options, and these are just my top five, so try whatever you like. Maybe you like the number five better, maybe you like the number one better. And if you don't like them, let me know your top five, and maybe I'll make a part two. Anyways, thank you for watching till the end, and I will see you in my next video. Peace.